Kate, it's fantastic to see you actually here on the Halo Rock Me trading floor in the Halo Urban Regeneration Project. A year ago this week, you appeared on the screen, you launched our inaugural event, International Women's Day, and you promised us you would come back. So welcome, and how do you feel about being back here in Kilmarnock? Because you were here just a couple of months ago. Well, I visited the Halo Project just a few weeks before I went on maternity leave, and it's great to be back because for me, this site captures everything that I'm about, which is generating economic prosperity, and in so doing, eradicating poverty and creating well-paid local jobs. You're doing it, I want to see that mirrored right across Scotland. So it wasn't enough that you had a beautiful baby last year. We sit here today, I've just come up um, from downstairs, huge press pack out there, want to know why Kate Forbes wants to be leader of the Scottish National Party and wants to be the First Minister of Scotland. What qualities have you got, Kate, that you can deliver for the people of, not just your party, but the people of Scotland? Well, you started with my baby, who's just turned seven months, and she's the reason I've got bags under my eyes. But actually, she's one of the reasons why I'm standing, because I think Scotland has all that it takes. It's got the talent, the ingenuity, it's got the industries, it's got the business ideas to be a really thriving and prosperous economy. And we still don't have a performance in our economy that matches that potential. And I certainly think that over the last few years of working with people like yourself and other businesses, I've got the experience and the desire to support Scottish industry, Scottish business, particularly small businesses in communities like Kilmarnock, to grow and be as good as they can be. But that's not the end in of itself. The end is ultimately supporting communities and dealing with some of the deep social inequalities that we have in our society. Because with economic prosperity, we can eradicate poverty, we can provide better opportunities, uh, particularly for our young people, and we can also reinvest in our public services that all of us care about. And, and you talked there about our, our communities, and at Halo we're very much about communities driving forward hope for our young people in particular. And here is a set in Halo, we've got 210 homes going to be built, low carbon homes at the forefront of the next generations of innovation, and companies we grow in here will be supplying product for that. It wouldn't be right if I didn't ask you this, Kate. The construction industry and the private sector have faced challenging times over the last two years. Challenging times on policy, like deposit return schemes, energy schemes. What are you going to do to help get houses back in the market and get people into homes? Well, businesses have faced storm after storm. They've weathered COVID. They've weathered Brexit. They're weathering the cost of living crisis with energy bills skyrocketing. I I think a government like ours needs to give business a bit of breathing space to weather this latest storm because again I believe in Scottish business. I believe that we are, can be the entrepreneurship capital, um, the area that can take the research and development from our universities, world leading universities, match it with the skills and the talents that we have here and create a very thriving economy, not just across Scotland but in each area of Scotland leaving nowhere behind. But you can't have community without housing, you can't have community without access to affordable uh, homes alongside uh, well-paid jobs and my approach to house building is to continue with the work that we've done to build homes across Scotland but to ensure that we are meeting the needs of each individual community on a decentralised basis. So the needs in Kilmarnock might be different from the needs in Sky, which again will be different from the needs, let's say, in Edinburgh. So we need to have an approach that isn't just one size fits all, but actually identifies the right businesses in the construction industry with the right resources in terms of Scotland's timber, with the areas that need that investment in housing. Okay. Would you say any government that you formed would be a government that was from growth from bottom up rather than from top down? One hundred percent. So it starts with speaking to somebody in Kilmarnock who tells me what they think Kilmarnock needs. And we go away as a government and say, right, how do we deliver that? How do we ensure that each individual, each family, each community in Scotland can flourish? 
And then government invests in the infrastructure, it invests in the policies and it invests in the public services that support these communities. But these communities are full of talent, skills, ingenuity, resources. So it's about enabling local communities to flourish. We have some um, amazing businesswomen here today and that's what we're here to discuss at a round table is International Women's Day. We've got Scottish Chamber here, Businesswomen Scotland and executives from various organisations and local organisations. What's your message to them that would give them confidence that Kate Forbes um, should be the next First Minister of Scotland? Well, I want to hear their ideas and then turn them into action. We know what the policies are that we need to implement. We need to make it easier for female entrepreneurs to access investment, access support, to uh, thrive in their workplaces. And then government needs to come along with competent leadership and actually deliver what we say we're going to deliver. So a few months ago, I obviously commissioned one of Scotland's leading entrepreneurs, Anna Stewart, to look at what some of the barriers are to women thriving as entrepreneurs. She's produced a great report that shows you know, there's no lack of talent and ideas amongst women in Scotland. The key is getting rid of the barriers to them succeeding. And when they succeed, contributing to the economy, creating jobs, then all of Scotland will succeed. Okay. Kate, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. And when you were on the screen last year, I asked you a question. <laughs> it wouldn't be a halo rock me interview. Oh, no. Yeah, here we go. Without you telling me what your favourite tune is. You told me you loved country oh. and western. So... For one day only, spill the beans. Right, your okay. Track? So the one I listened to most recently was um, by a guy called Eric Church, okay. and it's called Springsteen. Springsteen. Just to pick one. Excellent. Kate, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. It's been a busy day for you downstairs with national, international uh, news agencies here. Um, and all I can say is um, good luck. Thank you. Um, and keep batting the bat for women. Thank you. Will do. Thanks. Thanks.